Pepper Stone live event. Today, we're going to, of course, all of the biggest movements in the markets at the moment, including stocks, commodities, and obviously also looking a little bit at cryptos this week, Ty. It's been an eventful one. We've seen inflation figures, but we know that this week has so much more big news events. And on top of that, we've also got uh, some big moves ahead as well with US dollar in particular focus. My name is Thomas Atkinson. How are you going this week, Ty? Good, thank you. Yeah, we've certainly seen a bit of a, a rocky road. We've got uh, key indices telling us different things, Tom. I'm looking forward to jumping into that and seeing if we can find mm. a leading indicator for us to let us know what is going on. So, yeah, looking forward to jumping in. All right, so we... Okay, so Tyrone, let's get into the charts themselves and have a look at what's going on. And of course, US 500 has been in focus recently with a lot of rallies and then small drops and then rallies and then small drops. It seems to be constantly two steps forward, one step back. Do you want to walk us through how important the 20 moving average still remains, which we've talked about almost on the show consistently, I think now for maybe about a month, two months, uh, and how this still means that we're an upward trend for now? Yeah, most definitely. Look, the 20 moving average has been an absolute, you know, stronghold for the S&P 500. No question about that. Uh, and realistically, it's been that way for, yeah, effectively, I mean, you could make a case for it right, of, uh, right through 2024, uh, right from the start of January, really, like it's been yeah, being given five very, very good opportunities. But the truth is, it's been above the 20 moving average uh, ever since, yeah, basically the end of October last year. So, yeah, in, in reality, if that's all you were trading, you're going to be having a pretty good time of it. It is trying to make a new high. There's no question about that. And look, if you look at the candle structure, you can see, yeah, what is definitely an evening, uh, what's a morning star pattern in the wrong place. Um, and that's what, you've, that's what you're faced with here. And um, I did talk about it this morning. That is a, that's a dead set morning star, no problem. And if that was at the bottom of a double bottom uh, or at a, at a support level, you'd say, that's fantastic. But the fact that it's at, an all-time high on the market that you know where the rest of the indices are starting to look a little bit tired. Look, let's face it, you know the uh, the rest of the world is starting to get a little bit tired of this S and P 500. So um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to look at that pattern and think to myself, this is a fantastic mm. morning star opportunity because like all candle patterns, the most important thing about them is where they actually appear, not so much the structure of them, but where they actually appear in terms of where the market's actually at. So. You know, if we go, can we just touch it very quickly on yeah. the Russell 2000? Because you're going to see the we, absolute we opposite. It, it, we'll Wait, come back to I this just, one. Can I just quickly mention one thing? I just want to say this before you go at US uh, 2K. So actually, you mentioned the the um, the pattern here. It's interesting. Every time that's happened, if we look at the SPY in particular, because obviously the SPY is technically the real market, or well, it's the ETF of the real market, but it's, uh, it's shown every time, Ty. When we've had similar things like this, I've actually got a lot of them that have happened. And it's generally led into about two to three days of, uh, of strength. So it'll be interesting to see if we do crack a new high. Anyway, we'll go over to the US 2K. I had that on the charts for tonight because it's a completely yep. different pattern. And in particular, yep. it's got to do with this ascending uh, channel. So yeah, absolutely. And it's actually the complete opposite. I mean, if you look at this one, this is what you're this is what you're expecting to see at the top of a market that's starting to look a little bit tired. You've actually got the evening star pattern, which is the that's what you're actually looking for uh, when a market is starting to look a little bit tired. Now, doesn't mean that the S&P is not going to go to 2200 or 23 um, or the, the yeah whatever it can, it can certainly keep going up. We know that it can go up to um, you know 52 5300. Is it going to do it in this uh, move? Is probably really what we're trying to ascertain because we don't really care where it goes. All we care about is whether we can actually trade it or not, right? So yeah, yeah, I'm very, very conscious that that is not giving us the same information that the Russell 2000 is. Now, now this one here, we're drawing it up for you. The Russell 2000 has previously been a very, very good uh, precursor to what actually does happen because this is a real representation of the broader market, of course. So, you know, we, we do pay a lot of attention to this. And the fact that this has struggled to make, it's a struggle to maintain that uh, all-time high. Uh, and yeah. it's giving us, you know, it's giving us candle patterns that, you know, you'd think to yourself, well, there is a very strong possibility that um, we might see that pullback that everybody in the world is waiting for. Uh, it's still trading above the 20 moving average, though. Like, we've got to be a bit mindful about that. We are still in an uptrend. There's no question. 
uh, on that. So what we really want to be looking for is that Russell uh, 2000 maintaining that level above the 20 moving average as well. If it breaks down past the 20 moving average, yeah, we could probably start to really uh, target in on the S&P 500 uh, and then look for that potential weakness. Because we, yeah, generally speaking, what you're going to see is the S&P 500 following what the Russell does, uh, especially when the market really starts to move. Yeah, so the, the, I think the thing with the Russell for me, if I'm looking at it from my side, uh, weekly closure will be the biggest thing for me. If we do manage to close above 2090, which I wrote on the screen before, I do think that that would be incredibly bullish and the Russell will actually start to uh, have a broad market movement towards that 2250. It's not happening right now. Uh, as Tyron mentioned, 20 moving average on the Russell, which sits around this area here, uh, which is about 2040. We get underneath that, we're also going to probably break that 2030 low and 2000 will be the extrapolation of the ascending channel that's in here right now. So it's been fairly technical as well. In general, you always want to be looking at the bullish side more than the bearish side. And there are some key points for the S&P, which I'll just mark out here. Obviously, 5200. Now, if you know your stuff about markets, you might know that this week is a big hedging week. It has to do with trillions of dollars of options expiration and in many ways, the 5200 level is a uh, big, what we call a call resistance or a bit of a resistance level. It's also a psychology level that we know is in these markets. And therefore, it's going to be a point where I do think that some scalpers and day traders will be at least focused on it to see potential turns. The other thing that we've got is 5090. Now, underneath 5100, there's this little low that got formed uh, in the previous sessions, and that had uh, the weakness into obviously a huge bullish amount of strength. We get underneath there, a lot of dynamics will start to switch in the market. So obviously, the 20 moving average, we'd also have the 50 50 level that it would probably go down to. And if it breaks through 50 50, I think for swing traders mostly around the world, Ty, they'll be getting excited about what we call mean reversion. And for anyone that doesn't know what mean reversion is, basically, you put a 20 moving average on the charts and you would be looking at the weekly. So, uh, weekly mean reversion, you can see that the price is currently at 48 48. So, quite a lot below, and we haven't had a mean reversion this whole pool since October, which is quite rare to say the least. It's something that we haven't seen in many years with runs such as this. But for now, markets remain bullish, and I think that's probably what we're getting at. Okay, 100%. US dollar tie, US dollar. Now, I think, you know, maybe we've got an early trade of the week this week. So um, obviously each week we we go through two of our favorite pairs. Uh, so far, we've had some pretty good ones. We've obviously covered off on uh, the, the Hong Kong 50. We've used the Euro last week as another one that we had the bullish side on. And of course, we've also had uh, some nice some nice kind of gold and oil and other types of, uh, I guess you would say bias periods <laughs> based on technical analysis, of course. This week, Ty is going through US dollar. What are you seeing here, Ty, in terms of the movements currently? Yeah, look, I, I like what the dollar index is doing, mainly because of the level that it hit and what we needed it to do. I think we, we did talk about it a little bit the other day in terms of what we expected it to do. The thing with trading uh, and really navigating the markets and yeah, trying to navigate them successfully so you can actually yeah, extricate pips out of them, because that's, that's what the name of the game is, of course, is identifying not only when a market may move and shift, but also having a really good idea of where it will go to. And I think that's really, really important, Tom. You know, we talked about it last week. We thought that that sort of, if, if we get that, bro uh, that break and the 20 moving average kept it down, the 102.50 was a very, very solid target for, for many reasons. We've got um, a lot of role reversal uh, action happening there. You can see that. And we touched off it and it did bounce off quite aggressively off that level. Now that does happen quite a lot. So yeah, realistically, look, yeah, you're probably not trading the dollar index in its native form. You're more than likely, you know, probably longing the euro if you're shorting the dollar index and vice versa. Uh, there are yeah, better probably plays to have uh, from a spread perspective. You know, Pepperstone spread on the euro is next to zero. So yeah, it's always a really good trade to get into and the volume is obviously huge. But what we're seeing and what we would fully expect that we would see is a bounce off that 102.50. Now, it doesn't mean that this trend is going to reverse, but in reality, you know, that 103.50 uh, and the 20 moving average, probably more importantly, we've got a 20 moving average and a 50 moving average there on the daily. Uh, basically, draw, um, it's really drawing it like a magnet. So to me, I think the trade that I would, um, I'm paying the most attention to is, is that pullback back up to that level. So there's only 50 points in it, but yeah, that could mean, you know, a reasonable uh, move on the Euro. I think to me, it, it, went where it needed to go, which is a 102.50. It bounced off it like it should. Uh, and really now, 
what we're really expecting is a track up to that 103.50. Now, 103.50 is an extraordinarily strong level. Um, it's going to take some serious breaking if it's going to go long from there. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's just a pit stop for it. We see a smaller change of trend and then down she goes again. It's more than likely um, the scenario that may play out. But in order to actually, we're not really talking about that. That's a, that's a story for another day. What we're really looking for here is the move up to there in the first place. It's a, it's, it's a counter trend, if you like, um, and it's a scalp. But I think it's one that is the dollar index is playing the game very, very nicely from a, a standpoint of technical analysis. And I think that's that's the one that's got my attention this week. So are you looking at it around this price right now, Ty, in terms of the area uh, where we expect the bulls to come back in? Or are you looking Yeah, for because I think we've back? seen we've we've seen enough of a smaller time frame change of trend that's given it enough momentum and hopefully enough force to actually get it to the level that we needed to get it to. We're not, you know, we're not really expecting it to do anything but um yeah, move up from here. Uh, the 102, this basically the 103 level is really what we're talking about here. It's pretty much close enough to where it is. It's the 103.50 that we're really targeting. So yeah, going to a smaller time frame, bounce off a small 20 moving average, anything like that uh, would be enough to yeah probably get us in. But just be mindful though, you want to be keeping this trade relatively short and sharp because it is an absolute scalp. Yeah. Okay. So dollar index uh, potentially for the small rebound. Obviously, I was drawing out there before as well the rebound uh, at the moment. So you got to be careful of that one hundred three twenty five as well as that level uh, is is also a supply on the smaller timeframes that we see on the left here. So we already reacted once. If we do bounce through this, though, I would expect fully to to get back to that level tie that that one hundred three fifty. All right, next uh, level or stocks and commodities that we're looking at is, of course, technically the euro. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, this was one for, that we had last week, which we were seeing some bullish action on it. And in general, uh, we hit one of the targets during the non-farm payrolls event. So this is the 109.80. Uh, and I think that at the moment, it, it could be doing a lot of consolidation. Now, for that dollar index to do what you're kind of hoping it does is uh, coming back down here, maybe creating a giant flag. Uh, so look, the, at the moment, that's pretty much what we're in on the euro. You can see it's kind of reversing off the high. I think a break of 109.80 is certainly worthwhile having an alert on. It's momentum trading market at the moment, Ty, which I think you'd agree with. So if markets yeah. break through a level, they're often just, you know, ripping to the next zone. Obviously, at the moment, we're seeing that in crypto commodities and, and the uh, industry space. So pullbacks at the moment are coming through. Uh, you can see here it's making a series of, uh, so a bit of a switch here in terms of the high, and then we're making a series of lower lows and lower highs. So I think that uh, the level of around 108.80 would be pretty similar to that 103.50. I'd say these are pretty similar. I think that would be a really nice um, yeah, culmination of what would happen on the dollar index. And I think your trend line would continue then, that, that little fancy trend line you got drawn there. Um, mm -hmm. We'll catch it. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that's just the line that's going through the lows. I mean, I'll draw it yep. properly for you guys so you can see it. So it'd be through there and it would be basically the third touch. So you're still making a series of higher highs and higher lows at that point. Uh, this would be a very interesting point. Obviously, demand. We'll see what happens. But uh, at this stage, yeah, I could see euro still being temporarily weak. But if it gets through 10980 tie, I'm pretty bullish on the euro to a, yep. uh, to around a 111 figure. So quite quite big moves coming up in currency as we see big switches across a lot of central banks' thought processes. So this is another one that's been happening recently, which has obviously been the gold bulls. Uh, we remain pretty strong um, in terms of the way that weekly close was really solid. Um, new all-time high weekly close, which is a big deal, 2181. Almost gets to 2200, which is that psychology level. It's pretty extended move. I wouldn't be surprised to see some pullbacks, but I think at this stage, Pullbacks to be met by bull demand, uh, at least the way I'm seeing it. What do you think, Ty, in terms of trend? Yeah, I think we we really touched on it last week, and I don't think much has really changed in the sense that, you know, that, that gold can do its own thing no matter what happens to the market. And and realistically, you know, I, I'm not surprised that we're seeing, a lot, like I said, I agree with you. I think if we get a break of that 2200, uh, it, I think it's just going to potentially keep moving up. The bulls, that there's no... There seems to be no stopping it at the moment. I would like to see a pullback. I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, probably a 2100 pullback would be really, really sexy, actually. Um, that'll bring it back to you know, some sort of a moving average and also a change of trend on a smaller time frame. That would be nice. I'm not sure if we'll get it. Uh, but you know, in reality, you know, it's a very, very, very strong, probably one of the strongest um, instruments at the moment, Tom, you'd have to say. Um, 
in, in the way that it is moving. It's not that it's actually breaking to all time highs. It's actually the way it's doing it. It doesn't actually break an all time high. It's actually smashing it. Um, and that's, yeah, yeah it's, un, that's unusual. Yeah, for gold, it's a pretty big move. I mean, there are other all time highs that are happening right now to go into that are smashing even more, which is obviously the crypto universe. And we'll just have a quick look here at Bitcoin. But uh, just a quick reminder as well if you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat and we'll answer them throughout. And also, if you enjoy these types of streams, you enjoy this live analysis, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It does help us out to know that uh, Peps don't enjoy it and we continue doing it here every Wednesday, by the way. Sign up links down below at 8 p.m. AEDT for the time being. And obviously, it'll just go to AEST, I believe, in the future. So uh, every week, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Now, Bitcoin tie. Uh, there's no stopping this thing right now. Obviously, it had that patented uh, crypto shock, which is the 15% down tick that it had the <laughs> other day. Now, interestingly, when you do usually see this in generally a, a new cycle or a new cyclical period, which is what people are betting on here, they're betting on the, the idea of the rise of the ETFs, the rise of the halving cycle and all these things that are now people are starting to figure out. But um, it just keeps going from strength to strength to strength. And there's no stopping the trend just yet. Um, this was the sign of weakness. Generally after this, you sometimes go sideways to down in terms of the data stats. Um, but look, the trend remains intact. So even if you've got data stats, it's all about trend. And in this stage, we have no breakout to the low side. So it's who knows where it stops right now. And I've got I've got my own thought processes on it tie in terms of where I think it could go. But um, yeah, it's an unstoppable trend uh, for now. And I think that day traders better be very careful because the one thing about crypto is it can do this whenever. And so uh, it could drop 15%. doesn't matter about the ETFs. It could do that. It could do 25% even in a matter of hours. So you just got to be careful on this one, I think, right now. Yeah, most definitely. I think it's one of those ones where you do have to be ultra, ultra careful in terms of um, where it's going to go. Uh, and it, and yeah, where it can go is anywhere. <laughs> I wouldn't want to, you, you wouldn't want to be putting a cap on um, on Bitcoin, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, people have called 100,000, 500,000, even a million, mm -hmm. Tom. It's the new safe haven. Um, don't worry about gold. Don't worry about the dollar index. It's the yeah. new safe haven. Pile in. Yeah. It's all I think good. the best thing to look at from, <laughs> from a crypto standpoint is to think about market capitalization sizes. That's going to be really, I think, the key to, to figuring out any type of structure in the future. But that's for another day and another story, tie. Let's keep going through some pairs here. We've got US oil, obviously oil being a little bit annoying. Um, and what I mean by that is it keeps sitting on the same level we talked about last week, 20 moving average. We haven't seen an 80 break. Um, that remains a very key level for us. Mm. And the 20 moving average remains still holding. You can see here a wick that saved it from this day of selling, a doji. I've got an alert just above here, uh, but it's now, it really needs to start doing something. I mean, both US oil and UK oil, if we just quickly load up both prices here, um, you can see that we've got, you know, a very condensed kind of market that's been coiling for a while. And what that's doing, so Brent and US oil, um, WTI, are both, are both basically coiling. I think it's going to be an explosive move. The trend is generally to the upside. Um, but yeah, I just I, we don't really have um, a solution yet in terms of which which price I would go with the trend, which is the upside. So um, generally, the coil is going to be to the to that level so far. Uh, key levels this week to remind you of is U.S. oil on the eighty dollar break, and then eighty two fifty to eighty four fifty in terms of where we think the barrel is going. So a key point there to be watched. Now we'll go over to my top of the week, uh, which is going to be copper. And it's done something a little bit annoying while I was waiting for us <laughs> to talk about it, which is it's already breaking out. So, yeah, look, uh, a few hours ago, I've, I've obviously been talking about copper being uh, the bullish kind of pair for a while now. Been looking for this 3.95 break for ages, and it, it did look like it was going to do it the other day. So it's nice to see copper breaking out for the first time. Um, this is mostly because there's a constraint now going on copper, artificial constraints. So we're seeing... Uh, copper price being reflected here and we're probably going to break through i would think the fall bar barrier and move towards 4.1 we would want to see this hold above for daily so that's going to be a big deal um, but in general you know the next stop is 4.1 4.15 and copper is is a very interesting pair because if you think about it and you pull out very very long term you've kind of got this inverse head and shoulders you've got a long time coiling here and you've got the right type of stuff for another inverse head and shoulders as well, which is a left head right with a rally. So what I like to do there is I like to grab both uh, expectations. So of course you've got the big one and the small one. 
And then you take this pattern here and you can proof it. Now, this is a technique that I've used for a long time. And the technique has to do with basically uh, pattern proofing. So 4.2 would be the pattern proofing concept. And I think that's kind of nice. So there's a lot of free air above for copper um, if it is able to hold today's move. But it does seem like it. it's uh, wanting to do it from a technical level anyway. It wants to. It, it looks like it really wants to, doesn't it? Yeah, like that bounce. Uh, not, uh, look, not this, this, yeah. Hmm. I don't think it's dissimilar to oil, actually, in the sense that it kind of needs to do something now at this level. No, I, I kind of feel like it has been doing it. Like this one here uh, was actually an alert that we had on the show a few weeks ago from one mm. of the viewers out there. I remember. And they yeah. were they, they kind of alerted me to this this level down here. So that was, yeah, it was literally the start of Feb. And I've actually liked it heavily since then. Um, and it, it was a zone I had looked at, but when it came up and it consolidated around this 385, you know, I've been very, very bullish on this pair. And that's because it makes sense. It's very, very cheap in terms of where copper has been over the years. And uh, when you start to see supply constraints coming in, you look at these monthly as well, probably an overlooked market tie that I don't think enough people look at. Have a look at this. So you got to, we, a, re, a rejection, obviously Doji, another rejection and another rejection. You know, when you start to look at these higher time frames, you can really start to see how you can get a little bit of, a, maybe a little bit of a bias for your smaller time frame trades as well. <laughs> but look, we'll see how copper works out. It's an interesting one. Uh, be warned if you do, it's not really necessarily the, the easiest thing to trade because it does have some times some spreads you need to be watching out for. So uh, just be careful there, guys. Um, but it's an interesting one. And obviously we're seeing some breakout structure. All right, we've got some questions coming in here uh, just in terms of some stuff, Ty, that I thought we'd talk about. And <laughs> Will and Gabba doesn't like copper. you got you got to like anything that, that has ratios, Will and Gabba. You know this. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, let's move over to Tesla and have a look. <laughs> By the way, we, we, we've known each other for a long time. Oh, don't worry, guys. Uh, so let's have a look here at Tesla. And people are saying it's breaking down. Yeah, pretty negative kind of session for it. Now, so I just want to bring up Tesla because obviously it's a very popular stock to trade. Um, it's a very popular stock in general. And we are opening pre here down. Now, I liked what I saw out of the previous session. I was looking for this to get above this 180, what's this price? 183, which was going to be my favorite pick of the week, actually. Um, obviously, it was if this thing had actually gotten above this zone. Uh, but yeah, another day of weakness for it. Unfortunately, the news doesn't seem to get better for Tesla at the moment and led into a decline. But I thought it was a good learning experience for a lot of us because what it is is at the moment we've gapped down and then we've sat here for one, two, three, four, five, and six days. Now, if it does end up holding and then one day it gaps up above here, uh, I'll ask the chat actually, what do you guys think this is in terms of a pattern? So if we go from um, a holding pattern like this and then, of course, we gap up, uh, what does that mean this overall analysis is? Because, of course, volume has remained relatively stable here as well. Uh, Jason says C triple Q is coming to life. Yep, we've got the Hong Kong 50 as one of our analysis periods today. Joe says Island, absolutely correct, Joe. That is absolutely correct. Nice. And of course, this is the this would be an island reversal. Now, one of the things I liked about the previous session was we took a low, so we made a new low, and then we rejected it with a bullish hammer. Now, if we come out and we actually got above this point, but more importantly above here, that's starting to show a change of trend. And that's something we do look for together. Uh, we still got you here, Ty. I think you might have actually dropped. Oh, I am here. I think the camera's just dropping in and out. That's all. You, I've got a couple of little issues. I'm still here though. I can actually see it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, all and right. loving so, what we see on loving what we see on the HK50. Yes, the HK50 has been really good. So this is one we bought up. Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> I think uh, we yeah we started talking about it when we started to move over to the live sessions. So the Hong Kong 50 has been doing quite well. Uh, it might not be an NVIDIA in the single day moves, but in terms of uh, risk reward ratio, it's been pretty nice. It's up 11% since we started talking about it. And it's broken through, of course, many of the things. Last, the first time we looked at it, it was just a preemptive strike. Now it's breaking through this trend line, which is, of course, something we love to see the break of a you know, pretty negative kind of period. It's gone into a flag structure, which is similar to Euro. So, what you start to see on these shows when you follow them along is there's a lot of replicatable techniques so basically here we have a replication of a flag and i'll just quickly give you a bit of a hint on what makes this a pretty solid trade uh, this week if you're in it from a momentum based standpoint 
it has to do with these two candles here. So we come down on a flag. All right, fair enough. It's just like anything else, I guess. Uh, but you'll notice here we have a doji. So that's a long leg doji. And then we have a rejection wick. And a lot of people are going to try to short that. And therefore, there's going to be a lot of stop losses above here. Now, when you see a pattern such as the flag, and I've done a lot of flag trading over my times, um, when you see this type of breakout from a big, strong engulf candle that basically goes through, that's going to be a very strong signal that the momentum is on. And in this case, of course, it was. And that led into another excellent session. And so far, so good in terms of the way that the Hong Kong 50 has been trading. And of course, this is within the Pepperstone platforms, uh, whether you're trading on MetaTrader 4, 5, or TradingView tie, of course, all of them, which is excellent. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. C-Trader, I think it is. It's been a good trade. Look, at the, the HK50 has definitely been a good trade. Very, very technical. Um, and, and like I said, we've been watching it for a little while now. And yeah, a, a break of this level. And yeah, realistically, it's got, it has got a fair bit to go if it really gets momentum up. I don't know if it's the end. Yeah, I, no, no, I think there's, it, there could be a bit of a run here. You got to remember, it's a lot of the time, especially in these markets, they've been quite suppressed. So it's a long time. I mean, this is, this is completely stark contrast to what we've seen in obviously America, where we've gone all the way from uh, 18 highs here and 21 highs all the way down. I mean, some of these markets are absolutely uh, beaten <laughs> within an inch of their lives in terms of what we've seen. Thank you very much, Monica. Appreciate that. Um, just remember to ask any questions and we'll go through them as much as we can. And here we've got uh, the pound US dollar from Georgia. It says uh, seems to have broken a long range of the daily chart thoughts. Let's have a look at the pound USD tie, another pair that we often do look at. Obviously available here. And we can go and have a look at the weekly first. So we'll do a bit of analysis here from a top-down perspective. So first we have... Uh, we have a breach last week, a very strong weekly close. I think both you and I would agree that this is pretty strong. It also has flag-like properties, doesn't it? What do you think, Ty? Yeah, it does. No, no question about that. It's look, it's one of those ones where yeah, it is hard to to look at. It's look, it's a flag, uh, but it's at that top of that flag that we always look at, and we say if it breaks that point. Yeah, then we're looking at that replication. I think that um, it does have to get above there. I think if you look at it from the the standpoint of what it's actually trying to form, what, what it's mean? got a little bit. It's got a little bit of work to do. No question about that. But if it does it, um, I think the upside is good on it. It's a. It's one that's probably it, it leaves the radar a little bit. Of the pound out, USD. It's a broken sorry. Out? It's broken out though. Don't you think it, it is broken out? I, I mean, if you were trading the, the actual pattern itself, absolutely, you'd be in. But this is the failure point. So yeah, if you've if you've traded that, you're already in the the pattern itself. But the failure mm -hmm. point is at the very top of the pole, which is kind of where it is now. So if it's going to fail, that's probably the place it's going to fail. But if it does get past this little bit of noise, uh, you could probably see the the pole replicating, no question. Yeah. Okay. So the, one of the things I think of when I look at the pound here from the weekly into the the daily kind of timeframes is that uh, we are at that, that that first point of where this classic kind of resistance becomes support. We've obviously got a downward scaling or downward sloping here. I could see it go even further down. One thing I would do, uh, which obviously is available inside the Pepperstone TradingView platform, if you have Pro, would be to put a fixed range volume profile through this range. And one of the reasons I would do that is because you can see here that it's been pretty congested in terms of fairly equal, but there is a clear point that markets have liked to touch which is back down in here. Now, what Ty is talking about is that a lot of a lot of flags, they'll breach out initially, everyone will get excited, and they'll pull back fairly substantially before actually going. Um, and this could be an interesting level to look at. So this is that 127. Oh, wait a second, I'll get that here. 120, yeah, 126.80 to 127 price range. So I think that's an interesting point to see whether the bulls, if it does get back down there, whether the bulls pick it up and would be probably what I would look at. This is just the initial. So if you're going to trade pound US dollar long from here, you'll want to see breaks above uh, these little highs here. So say like here, we get the thing, and we want to see a movement above there, and then we'd be looking towards the long. But for now, it's actually making a series of lower highs and lower lows on the smaller timeframes, and that could continue all the way down to that structure. Would you agree with that, Ty? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's doing all the right. Uh, one thing about the market at the moment, and I think we can see this across the board of a lot of instruments, is that it actually is doing a very, very technical pattern on nearly everything. Even though we are seeing big volume, we are seeing big volatility, a lot of the patterns are actually strong. And the momentum, and it really goes to show, like you can even see on this one, even on the two hour, look at the moves on the way up there, the 20 moving average pullbacks all the way up. And uh, now that we're starting to see a series of lower highs and lower lows on the way down, the moving average uh, is proving to be resistance rather than support. So it does all the things that we talk about every single week. And I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, realistically, as much as the markets are, you know, I, I think starting to get a little bit exciting, uh, they are holding up from a technical standpoint. I don't think we're in a market where, you know, it's very difficult to trade. I think the trades are relatively um, in line with what we're always looking for from a technical standpoint. And you can see now the 20 moving average, even on this small I time thought... frame, is proving to be resistance. Hmm. This one here. Yeah. So generally, I like the one, two, three concept. So you get the one, get the two so far, you get underneath, come back to the 20, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, till the sequence is broken is, is quite a good one for the old TA. Uh, movements on 20s and something you could uh, potentially bring into your own concepts. Uh, we've got to hear from Michelle Tesla in the golden pocket from Jan 23 low to Jan 20, July 23 high. That's correct. So what the golden pocket is, is uh, the 61.8 to the 66 GAN number or GAN number. Um, and that that's, yeah, that's a fairly common level that a lot of stock traders use to find out some stuff here. Uh, Travis says, what do you think about soybeans? Uh, the COT report shows speculators retail was very short. Ooh, softs. Um, <laughs> we'll go through softs in a minute, Travis. You gotta be really careful with softs, man. Um, I'll talk about it in a sec. I've been beaten down by the softs before. Will and Gabbard says here, TNT, do you use seasonals? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Um, and they do give edge over the longer term. Um, you just need to use high quality data. Um, but yeah, look, I'm Tyra and I are, are massive fans of using data along with technical analysis. It's something we even teach a lot over on our website. Um, and specifically, it's it's one of those concepts where I think you want to be building your systems out with things that have you know some form of extra edge, and then you need to have some kind of uh, way of of let's say triggering those trades. Uh, but certainly, we would be looking at it. So I won't look at the cut reports uh, during this one, but let's bring up soybeans, Ty. Wow, I have not looked at uh, soybeans, not soy bon or whatever I was writing there. Let's have a look at soybeans. And have you seen cocoa? <laughs> cocoa price is wild. All right, so this is a very, very sold market. Obviously, it's been selling now for what looks like years and it has hit a pretty extreme low. Um, weeklies obviously started to pick up off the bottom. It does have some signs of technical switches. So one of the things that Tyra and I often look for is breaches of downward trend style metrics. Obviously, Ty is going to mention it. What are you going to say, Ty? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> gonna, but I'm going to take some water, guys. I, well, can anyone guess before he says it? What's he going to say? What is Tyra going to mention on this chart? You know it. You know it. You yeah, can see I'll it right on. now. I, I, yeah. No, no, no. They're going to guess it. They're going to guess it. Slight They're going to guess Slight it. Delay. They're going to guess it. And and the thing is, and, and I think it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's... isn't really though, doesn't that mean though, you know, what we're, what we're really trying to see here. And this is what we're, what, what we really want is re replicable patterns, right? That's what we're trying to get. And yeah. if, if everybody can see that, um, and that, that means that we're doing our job, Tom, it means that we're doing our job well, because we're, we're talking about things that are replicable, that work all the time, and that you can identify very, very quickly, because they're the things that give yeah. you the trading opportunity. And, and I think it's really, really important that when you, trading can be as basic or as complicated as you want to make it. That's that's the truth of it, right? Like you can you can make it very, very complicated, or you can make it very, very simple. And um, mm -hmm. And realistically, uh, if you follow this rule, um, you're going to have a pretty good time, but you're probably going to get sick of Tom and I talking about it, especially me, because I talk <laughs> about it a lot. And and the reason the reason is is because it works, mm. and it has worked for a very yeah. very long time, and it's not not about to stop anytime soon. All right, let me just quickly write this down. Oh wait, I almost missed three, four, five, six, seven. Joe gets it right. He says the twenty moving average tie. And um, yeah, look, I mean, it was a very heavy downward trend. <clears throat> well, you can see here it hit many times, and basically this is this is something that that has now reversed that. So it's got to mean something uh, when you do look at these things. You've got basing, you've got break of the downward trend line here that became quite steep. 
you've probably got some form of capitulation, you've got a break of a 20. All of these things mean that generally pullbacks should be met by bull demand at this stage. So has it reversed? Man, it's sowing the signs. Uh, I would say, though, I'd caution against uh, softs. They are a, a very a very tough trade, so you really need to know your stuff. And, and maybe it might be worthwhile also getting into contact with your Pepperstone representative just to make sure you're fully aware of everything to do with softs. So I, I just think that's the, the best course of action when it comes to safety. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Natural gas, Ty. Natural gas, natural gas. Uh, let's have a look. Natural gas. Now, this is not something that uh, – this is, again, another one that's the dangerous. They, they call natural gas the widow maker, Ty, um, or in this case, just maybe the, the slightly uh, – the bad heart, I would say, <laughs> uh, because it is so uh, huge on the moves. So, effectively, it gets extremely bullish and extremely bearish at different times life. And you can see here the chart has been very bearish in subsequent years, especially since basically August of 22, and it's still down in these lows. Now, when you look at this on a chart, it's a little bit different to maybe what you might think. Uh, I do see it as probably still too early to tell, but you'll notice I have this big red line down here. I'll just show everyone what it's from. It's from the previous lows. This is why everyone's so excited about it because it's back in these, these 2020 lows. Uh, we're seeing a very reduced price. I'm not sure that it's, it's fully based high. I could see some shenanigans. The first little signs of recovery here, but I could see it doing this. I could see, uh, you know, I, I always have a saying, to stop a freight train generally takes more than just a little bit of a change of trend. It usually takes some kind of Wyckoff. And uh, I have bought Wyckoff on here for a quote, but I'll do it right now. Uh, remember, <laughs> Wyckoff tells us to uh, have the study of force. And at this point, the force is very negative. And I, I think we need to see, you know, more action, more consolidation at the base. It's too early for me. What do you think, so? Yeah, no, most definitely. I think it's still got a bit of work to do. It's showing the signs that we need to keep an eye on it, probably a place where you want to be setting some alerts. Uh, and, and if it does go through and, and break up, I think that yeah, there, there could be a decent move up. But at this stage, I think I'd be just watching it more than anything else. I wouldn't be preempting anything long term yet. It's still got a little bit of work to do in my eyes. It's got some roll costs on it as well, so you need to be aware of that one. Mm. The big red line. Yeah, there's there's many red lines on this on this particular chart. All right, let's keep going through. We had the Aussie that I thought was worthwhile talking about. So the Australian dollar actually ended up um, coming back with a bit of a vengeance last week, and it broke through uh, what I had as an alert on the chart that we spoke about last week as well, which was that 66 level and 20. Now, I do like uh, the idea of possibly further weakness maybe coming through here, Ty, but I'm actually favoring the Aussie and the strength side. So with your I concept before, if the dollar does strengthen, it could be dollar strengthening and then that forces down the Aussie, but then it might weaken off that level and that could uh, really push us up. To me, this is actually the beginning of a potential base here. And the Australian dollar um, has been has been holding for a little while with a lot of weeks. So um, yeah, what a, what a key level for it. And I could see pull back into strength. There's some stuff going on here for sure. Yeah, most definitely. I think that, um, oops, excuse uh, the voice. I, I think it's got, look, it, it pulled back off that level that we thought it would. The, um, yeah, that sort of 67 cent mark is a uh, 68 cent mark is a difficult level for it. But, um, you know, I think the weekly is telling us the story, isn't it really? Like if we get, you know, a weekly close above that previous oh, high, I think that there's really oh, good yeah. upside for it. Really good upside. Up for here, it. even, I think would be wild yeah. in terms of the Aussie. Absolutely. But, yeah. uh, but the way I'm seeing it is is kind of like Wool and Gabber is that at this stage, the trend is mm. down. It's like all the rest. It's like all the rest. We we topped off up the top here. We started to find weakness, which was a new lower low after this aggressive trend. And then each rally, we've kind of found weakness so far. So it's like this as a day trader, you're looking at it from a weakness perspective. And as a swing trader, you're saying, okay, well, give me the weakness. So then we can see maybe some demand bases being formed. And then I can get back into the strength. A weekly close will be a big one for uh, continuous strength if, if we did get that on the Aussie. Yeah. All right. Any other questions that people have, please put them through right now. I'll read some of the chat here, Ty. Uh, it says here, Jason says, uh, natural gas will have a tough time getting back to highs again because um, of... Uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, I guess, the world started making more available by production everywhere. So you basically got a production ramp um, to, to you know, kind of make the supply chain a little bit uh, 
I guess you could say more loose, <laughs> which we're seeing in quite a few things. Iron ore also taking taking a little bit of a dive from that. Uh, bond yield differential plays a big part in the odd USD. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of currency and yielding and all sorts of things that go on. There's so many different things that go into a currency, though. So I think it from a macro perspective, I think Tyron and I have often found that it's better to generally look at the currencies around the world from a price action based perspective. You can get bamboozled so easily. Like CPI last night uh, in Australia and obviously the morning in the US, that was a classic tie. We had a fairly bad CPI in many ways, high shelter, food, all the things you don't really want to see, a little bit higher, and yet the dollar barely moved up. Um, but at the same time, yields were moving up as well. So it just shows you that you know people were probably very caught off guard by that. They probably tried to short the US stock market and just didn't work out. Until you break through those price action levels, you just... You don't want to be doing it. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. It was, it was, it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, some other ones then I guess I will bring up just to discuss uh, in general. There are some big stocks around the world that are obviously at totally different prices. So let's have a look at Apple, another favorite of generally retail traders. And you can see here that it's back down to that first level of demand. Nothing really changes here from last week's analysis. It could be at the level that's going to hold for now. Um, it could also be that it weakens off and continues to weaken down uh, all the way back to the 150 and 130 levels. Do remember on a on a monthly, if it does break under 165, uh, that would be a huge DT double top on these zones. Another one that we're getting asked a lot about, Ty, is going to be semiconductors. Uh, we'll have a look at NVIDIA just to start off with. So everyone's loving the NVIDIA train. It dumps uncharacteristically massive last week and it's actually up here another one percent market which i expected uh, to occur so this is a big fall from top to bottom it lost 13.62 percent and i know that there's news around it but as we know news can sometimes be an excuse to uh you know, liquefy a position a little bit and we <laughs> saw it across all semiconductors and that's the thing that gets me funny about this we saw nvidia with the news Yet all of the semiconductors had these weird cells on them, which became buys literally 24 hours ago. So I, I could see this having a little bit of a tough time um, around this level up here. Look at the price. It's a 941. Now, this is a very strong trend. I wouldn't personally trade it towards the negative side because I think that's very tough. Um, but there's some weird signs here. When you see big reds like that, I, I pay attention to them. What, what are your thoughts on big red candles? Yeah, no, most definitely. Yeah, especially when they're bigger than the, I mean, the, the thing which is what really gets your attention is how much bigger it is compared to the previous candles. Um, it's giving a lot away from, yeah, the, the previous Ooh, candles. Holy. You can see it's so much bigger than everything else. Exactly. So, yeah, um, yeah so that's what you really want to be paying attention to most definitely. Yeah, it's just a, it, it's yeah. a wildly large candle here. Very large candle. Uh, one, last, to the previous one last one I want to go through, Google. So obviously a uh, pretty disliked stock as of recent, uh, probably the worst of the main AI, Mag 6, Mag 7s, whatever you want to say. Uh, it came back down again to a level of demand. It's rallied back up and it's hit into its first level, which is not only a 20 moving average tie on the daily, uh, but also a level of supply and previous support. So we have support, we have a supply, we have therefore a resistance, a role reversal level, a 20 moving average, it's going to be an interesting day for Google today. So it's down 0.17 in pre-market. Uh, but this is where, for the bears are going to take control of this stock again, they're going to try to do it around here. Most definitely. No, I think it's a, look, it's, it's, and this is going to bode a very, very interesting story for the NASDAQ and actually the industry, uh, the, all the indices abroad. A lot of these big magnificent sevens are starting to feel the pressure. Um, and it's going to be very mm -hmm. interesting to see oh, yeah. how the indices react from that. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to make your own pseudo magnificent seven uh, code kind of like thing in, in, in trading view, by the way, you can do so by uh, loading it up and you type in, you know, your Microsoft and you go plus and then you go plus uh, Google like this and then you go plus and then you go meta and you plus. I actually will create the magnificent six here today because I think Tesla shouldn't be included anymore. So we'll go AAPL and then uh, we'll put AMZN in. Now, if you press enter on that, what it'll actually do is it'll actually open up a kind of combined. Now, it's not perfect. It's actually pretty weighted towards NVIDIA. Uh, but this just shows you that the current trend of the MAG6 this year and the fact that it's just been making a series of higher highs and higher lows. And the reason I wanted to put it in, Ty, was mostly for you, just so I could say, look at this, <laughs> look, look at these touches. 
And uh, it's been, again, another one that's holding the 20. So it, it took a monster dive last week, don't get me wrong, but it bounced once again right around that level of, of support and, and the level that we have here. So mag six, if you want kind of like a pseudo version, you can do that um, inside the platform. Lovely. Uh, Joe says, what about huge gaps left behind by 820 and 680 by NVIDIA? Uh, look, gaps, we've done studies on gaps before. We found that I think it was something like most gaps on the upside end up filling. But the problem is if they don't fill after the first 30 days, it can take years. So the statistics are if you're going to fill a gap, it's really weighted towards the first couple of sessions. So think of it kind of like this is how it looks over a 30-day period. So it's really weighted in that first kind of week. Um, so first week is where you've got the huge amount of weights at the gaps. And then after that, it drops off. So once you go past 30 days, it could literally take a cataclysmic crash um, in the future. And then, yes, did the gap eventually fill? Of course. Uh, but it took a very, very long time. Anyway, from all of us here at Pepperstone, we'd like to say a big thank you for joining us here again Wednesday, 8 p.m. If you're interested in finding out more about us doing this every single week, links in the description down below. Uh, Tyron and I very much enjoy doing it. We hope you enjoy it as well. So please give us a thumbs up and we love to do this stuff. So hopefully there's some help there that you'll learn something throughout today's session. Tyron, any closing words of wisdom? No, that's it. I think just with the markets where they were at uh, in terms of levels, just trade with caution. You know, keep your trades relatively short with good stop losses. And I think that um, the trading navigation journey over the next few weeks is going to be an interesting one. And I'm looking forward to next Wednesday already to see what the uh, the moves even from this week are going to give us. So thanks very much for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye for now.